We have a massive leak on the RX 6700 XT that shows gaming performance versus the RTX 3070 and says that it is faster than the 3070. They also included benchmarks against the RX 5700 XT. Is the claim true and can we even trust the numbers in this leak? Let's get into it. There is a massive leak on the 6700 XT over at WCCF Tech and they showed benchmarks in 23 games at 1440p between the 6700 XT, the RTX 3060 Ti, and the RTX 3070. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out later. And looking at the benchmarks, you see several games where the 6700 XT clearly wins while in the others, the 3070 is the winner. Now I have taken the data and did the typical calculate the average of these games and when you do that you see that the RX 6700 XT comes in at 108.3 frames per second while the 3070 comes in at 106.9 frames per second for a difference of 1.3%. So just by using the average you would conclude the 6700 XT is faster than the 3070 by just over 1%. However, I noticed that the list included one game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, in both DX11 and DX12. Removing the DX11 numbers, we can see that the average has now changed slightly, and the 6700 XT is now less than 1% faster than the 3070. In going through the data, I noticed some very familiar games and numbers. At AMD's RX 6700 XT announcement, they showed a subset of the games presented here. I went through the tedious process of counting pixels to calculate the frame rates in their chart for the RTX 3060 Ti and 3070. I then checked my pixel counted values against AMD's chart, and when I compared these values in a table with the leak at WCCF Tech, I found that they are all within one frame of each other, something that is easily a rounding error when you are counting pixels. Let's dive a bit deeper into the numbers beyond just the average and let's see if we can identify any other trends. So I plotted the data as a percentage difference from the 6700 XT from the 3070 versus the 23 games in the leaked benchmarks. I also included the 3060 Ti as a sense check. If you're not familiar with this type of chart, the 3070 is the reference from which the performance is measured. When above this line, the performance is faster than the 3070. When below this line, the performance is slower than the 3070. If we just look at the 3060 Ti values in gray, we can see that it is consistently slower, on average 9% slower, than the 3070. This makes sense since the 3060 Ti uses the same die and is essentially a cut down 3070. This provides one sense check against the validity of the data. Now focusing on the 6700 XT in red, we can see that on the left we have 6 games that are greater than 5% faster than the 3070 and a few significantly faster. In the middle, we have 9 games where the 6700 XT is within 5% of the performance of the 3070. If you've watched my videos in the past, I consider that to be a tie since I can't tell the difference between two cards that are within 5% of each other. Moving to the right, you see where the 6700 XT is more than 5% slower than the 3070 in 8 games. The issue with averages is that it just takes a couple of high flyers to skew the data. When we look closely, we see Dirt 5 and Assassin's Creed at about 25% faster. As I mentioned in my last video, those two are AMD sponsored titles, so you would expect a better performance when compared to an Nvidia card. Also, Fortnite is an amazing 35% faster than the 3070. If these are the games you play, then the 6700 XT is much faster in rasterization than the 3070. However, what if you have a large library of games you play? What if you keep adding games to this chart for a big 40 game benchmark comparison? I suspect we are seeing the best of the best performance here for the 6700 XT since that is what we saw at AMD's announcement. And when you add more games to this chart, you will see this trend develop where the performance will be less than the 3070 and will be trending toward the 3060 Ti. And I'll discuss why I think that later on. In my last video, I said I expected the 6700 XT to be closer to a 3060 Ti in performance over a big 40 game benchmark, and I don't see anything in this data that changes that expectation. By the way, if you learned something from this video and would like to see more, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing with notifications on so that I, along with the YouTube algorithm, will know you'd like to see more content like this. I was disappointed at AMD's announcement when they did not show a comparison of the 6700 XT against the card it was replacing 
in the 5700 XT. Well, this leak changed that. I plotted the leak data from WCCF Tech and used the 5700 XT as the baseline. We can see that in these 16 games, the 6700 XT is on average 35% faster than the 5700 XT. In my last video, I said I expected the 6700 XT to be 25 to 30% faster than the 5700 XT, and if you compare it in a big 40 game benchmark, I still expect that to be true. They also had comparison numbers to the GTX 1070 Ti. If you recall, the 1070 Ti was introduced in November of 2017 to combat AMD's Vega 56 GPU. From the chart, you see the performance improvement anywhere from 50% better to more than 150% better at 1440p. That's an average of 88%. So if you still have a 1070 Ti and are thinking of upgrading, then this would be a good upgrade, if you can get the card, at MSRP. Finally, can we trust this data? I mean, no source was given at all, which is a big red flag. I've analyzed lots of data, and when I looked at this data, I do believe we can trust this data, and here's why. First, we have the similarity in the leaked data to AMD's own data, and they are within a frame of each other. Second, the trends you see when comparing the 6700 XT and the 3070 are similar to the trends between RDNA 2 and Ampere that I've analyzed in my previous videos. So if a 6800 XT was better in some games versus a 3080, you see similar trends here. So it does not appear made up. Third, there is a familiarity and a similarity in the games chosen in these benchmarks. I have looked at a lot of AMD benchmarks in the past, and more recently with RDNA 2, you see similar games and similar APIs chosen in AMD's benchmarks with the ones in this leak. If you look at the cross-section of games in this leak, along with the APIs chosen, and then compare them to the games AMD has shown in their footnote slides where they list all the specifics, you will find similar games, settings, and APIs. I mean, who benchmarks Immortals Phoenix Rising? Now my motivation for doing this type of analysis video in the past has been to help understand if I should look to upgrade to this type of card and does it provide good value. When I waited to watch the review videos in the past, by the time I determined if I wanted a card, they were already sold out. However, I found out in the leak at WCCF Tech that AMD is lifting the embargo for the reviews one day prior to when you can purchase it, or at least attempt a purchase. So you will have a whole day to watch all the review videos to find the games you play to determine if this is the card for you. If you haven't seen my last analysis video and my expectations for the RX 6700 XT and why, check that out by clicking on the video on the left. And if you want to see how this analysis method was successful for the RTX 3060 and whether you should upgrade from previous generation cards, then check out that video on the right. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.